welcome to uh, Spanish 312 Hopscotch. And uh, today I'm very, very pleased and uh, honored and excited to have uh, with me uh, Jenny Nebraski, who is the author of Yo Yo Boing, but also of other important texts such as uh, The United States of Banana, uh, Empire of Dreams, El Imperio de los Sueños. Uh, she has been uh, writing uh, for many years, but previously she was also an academic. Um, I understand uh, she was also a tennis champion and fashion model at some point as well. Uh, comes originally from Puerto Rico, and I understand has lived for uh, many years now in New York. So, um, Giannina, uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for doing this. It's a it's a great pleasure. And uh, I thought I'd I'd ask uh, about how you see yourself as classify yourself, I suppose, as as a writer. Do you see yourself as a Puerto Rican writer, a Latin American writer, perhaps a New York Rican writer? Or an American writer, uh, how how do you uh, how do you see yourself in those terms? I I see myself as belonging to all and to none. That's how I see myself. I have always seen myself like that. Um, I believe I don't believe in in. I, I have never I have identified with things with a distance because my main thing is to create beauty and art. So I, I look at things with a distance I, and I maintain myself apart from the mainstream from what, because that's how I, the only way I can maintain my, my liberty of expression as an artist. You understand? I, I do, I do. I, I'm thinking about the, in Yo Yo Boying, there's a play between distance and also intimacy. There's a, a lot of the book rev revolves around uh, intimate conversations between roommates, lovers, uh, and friends, um, and and yet there's also that that sense of 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 negotiating with the other, I suppose, of, of distance at the same time. I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that, the distance you were talking about. But also an interest in in intimacy at the same time in closeness. Well, uh, I have to refer to um, at that time I I had a group of people who were surrounding me, and New York was bursting in in energy. So, and I had uh, friends who made uh, parties, and that's where I got all the conversations talking to them and having a good time, you know? And uh, that's how I got the objectivity and the subjectivity, everything there. Yes, you really, you really conjure up that, that sense of, of a, a moment in time and, and a group as, as, as well, well, I think. It was the era of Clinton. This was the era of the Clintons. Uh, and I think I got it because there was an aperture in the world. Uh, and and they were going for globalization, and I think I got it there. The globalization too, uh, the breaking of borders. I have always tried to define my era uh, in different ways, and this was the era of Clinton. There was this look, looking aperture to to the world. Um, I, I'm repeating myself, but that's what I feel. Yeah. Did it seem, and do you think it was a time of optimism, of um, of 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 hope? I, I suppose it, it was. It was a time of optimism and of hope. It was a time of optimism and of hope, but it was a time where things didn't work any longer at mm -hmm. the same time, and there was the difficulty of things not working any longer the way they were, and you could see. You can see in my writing that difficulty of things not working the same way they were. Even in my style, I changed my style from Empire of Dreams to Jojo Boy. There's a change of style, and and I'm working with things that I don't know how they will turn out to be because I was working with experimentation. So uh, it was a difficult time in my style. In Empire of Dreams, it was very easy to write, very easy and 
it was beautiful. The whole book was beautiful. The whole journey was beautiful. But Jojo Wine was a lot of struggle and very difficult, especially with the language too, because I was entering the American mentality. I was entering another mentality that was not mine. Even though I'm American, I'm from Puerto Rico, but I'm, I'm saying that the mentality was totally different for me. I was entering a new world. So um, it was a difficult moment. And you see like a war between English and Spanish, a war of not only in language, but a war in values, uh, in values. So that's... I, I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that. Um, I, I, I'm very interested, you, you're talking both about a sort of moment of openness and and uh, an optimism and hope, but also about a struggle, a struggle with language, a struggle with writing. Um, the the book the book is a lot about that, you know that that yes. that, that issue. I, I wonder if you could say about how that worked out with language, because that's also an uh, obviously something in in your your boying, the shifts between English and and Spanish. You've got the short first and and third sections, which are entirely or almost entirely in, in, in Spanish. And then the long middle section where it's constantly shifting between the two. I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about how and why you, you wrote that way. I wrote that way because I had finished Empire of Dreams all in Spanish and I, I wanted to enter the, the, the American culture. I wanted to enter because um, I, I thought if, if I'm living here, I cannot be writing in Spanish forever. It will not go well with me because I, I deal on experiences. I deal on the reality I'm living. So it would not go well with me. So I cannot do it. And I didn't do it. Uh, I had to change drastically. And I had to learn English in a better way because the English I was taught in Puerto Rico was not very good. Um, it was my grandmother spoke English perfect, but when it got to my generation, the English was not taught well. And I went to the, the best school at that, at that time in Puerto Rico, but it was not, but it was a, a, a Spanish speaking school. I, I decided I wanted to go to a Spanish speaking school because for me, living in Puerto Rico was crazy to study in English. It was like, am I a Martian? I'm living in this culture with these roots. Why would I talk English? So my grandmother changed my school. I was in a in a English speaking school, but I went to a Spanish speaking school because I had to uh, deal with my roots first. And I did the perfect thing. And who, who would have thought that doing that I would in the future be the one who, who marked the, 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 the way for, for the emigrants. Because when, when you look at my books, it's a Spanish, total Spanish, then Spanglish, then English, because I'm entering the culture and I'm writing in, in, in the struggle of the emigrant. I want to portray the struggle of the emigrant, the struggle that all of us, have when we enter a different culture. So that's what I wanted to portray. The instability, the precarity of life. And the musicality and the and the dance also. So I, I guess both in the book and in your in your in your writing and also perhaps uh, you know as you as you look around having having lived in the United States um Again, Puerto Rico is and is not part of the United States, but having no, lived in no. the ma in the mainland United States uh, for a long time, uh, I wonder also how you see that um, how you see that New York or the United States has has changed and been changed by its immigrants. In other words, it's not just immigrants adapting, taking on the new language, for instance, and and new other customs and so on, but but the way in which. They've also, um, in in the last twenty years or so, marked a place like New York, and 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 mean that that others have to learn a little bit of Spanish, for instance. Yeah, you. I saw uh, Spanish was already main main language in in the era of Clinton, uh, but now it's it's 
a little bit uh, shy. The Spanish is a little bit shy because all the things that have happened with the wall and all the, these things. So Spanish has has been put to the back, but it's coming back. It, you know, it will never, it will never stop invading the United States. It will always be invading the North because Latin Americans have never thought that the America is America talking about the United States. America is the whole, is Canada, is the United States, is the Tierra del Fuego, is Argentina, is everything, everything from, from, from La Tierra del Fuego to the tippy toe of the Yukon, everything is America. So when you see all these immigrants coming from Latin America, don't think that they're thinking they're going to a different land. They, are, they, they think they are just crossing barriers of their own land, which is America. So they, they are looking for better opportunities in other places of their own land, like a European crossing from one place to another. So it's an aberration to have walls and to have all these type of things and to that uh, uh, limit our, our multiple possibilities in this world. This makes me think also this notion of multiple possibilities and and sort of breadth of vision. Again, back to Yo-Yo Boing, the, the cultural references that, that you include there I mean, I started making a, a, a little list. I mean, they're very, very they could, from high culture, um, uh, Fellini, uh, Cervantes, Nietzsche, Cortaza, Woody Allen, Neruda, T.S. Eliot, Foucault, uh, William Blake, uh, low culture. This extraordinary range, which is not even com confined to the Americas. I guess there's a sort of extraordinary sense of a uh, of, of range of, of of global culture which sort of passes through the conversations that take place in the book i wonder if you could say a little bit more about about that well i have always been a cosmopolitan i have always loved multiple cultures i'm always reading the past i have a phd in literature in spanish literature so i know i i i, I love to read and I these are my references and and they change through the time so but that's what I can I can talk about and when and when when I find an interesting conversation I'm always inspired you know I'm always inspired with people that make me think different and with the the new new things in the world they always inspire me and and the novel is also uh, very much a novel of conversation. It's a it's yeah. a novel of dialogue uh, yeah. on the whole. Uh, again, especially that long, long uh, uh, middle uh, section. In some ways, not a lot happens in the novel, but uh, there, there's this this endless talk. Uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that sort of dynamics of of conversation as you just described it, and as you try to represent it in the book. Yeah, well, the dialogues have always been a way of me, of moving. I am constantly walking in the streets. So uh, when I have, when I am in dialogue with the streets, I am in that dialogue with people too. And they, they make me move. The dialogues make me move. And I like to capture the process of thinking, the process of, of the way a conversation moves. I like I like I like to get ahead. I don't like to be stuck, even though I have been stuck many times. But I like to get ahead, and this is a way of getting ahead. And to to mark the process, as I mark the process between Spanish and Spanglish and English, I see the equivocations also. I see the mistakes. I'm not afraid of showing mistakes and and faults because I think it's very important. So I'm interested in the pro process. And not so much in the final product. All the final, the the final product will, will be beautiful. It will be beautiful because I love beauty, and I believe like like Ovid that, que que cosi, eh, what a beautiful thing when you don't see the art, when you don't see the art, because the art 
you don't have to see what went on to create this marvel that will appear later. You should not see. It should be concealed. The beauty, the not the beauty. The beauty should be shown, but it should be concealed. The 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 hard work should be concealed. Even though people might think, oh, this was written like that. It was not. It was never written like that. It had it had so much work inside, and it all my work is like that. But it should be concealed. The hard work, I don't want to show it. Like I don't want to show myself too much because I don't think it's important to be showing yourself. He says, vivió bien quien supo ocultarse bien. And I have always believed that, that you, you, have, to, you, you, you don't have to be showing yourself. In this era of, of surveillance, I believe in, in not being there in not being there. In fact, it gives me, I, I am shy when, when they take pictures. I don't like it either. I, I like to hide. I, I like to hide myself. I think the person is not important. What is important is the work. That's what I think. I think that's that's that's, that's fascinating and, and makes me think in, in new ways about the book. In some ways, do you think this is fair that you depict a sort of dissolving into the conversation into the group so so it's less about the self and, and more about a, a, a collective totally you're totally right it's always about the collective it's always about the collective even though it seems egocentric and narcissistic it's never that it's the collective is the, the chorus, the, the multiple voices in the world that appear, hearing the, the people screaming in the streets, hearing the screams of, of the people in the streets. That's what, what I love, you know. No, I, I like that a lot, to think of this as a, as a choral work. I, yeah. I wonder, but it, it does strike me, you say the art is to hide the art, um, but in some ways, this is also a book about the process of writing, right? It's a, it's about writers it and editors. It's about somebody who's stuck, and and it's about a, trying to get a book out in some ways. Yes. In some ways, it's 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 sort of showing how. It, it seems to me, in, in some ways, it's revealing the process of of how a book come comes about, how a voice emerges from the chorus, from the collective. Is, totally. Is that... totally, you're totally right. And how hard it is to write in English also when when you're thinking in Spanish or you're thinking in English and writing in Spanish and 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 sometimes. And you're accustomed to have your inspiration in one language, and you're changing to the other, and and uh, you're thinking in the other language. You know, it's 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 very schizophrenic and beautiful, and I like it. I I it goes with my personality. It goes with me. I'm frenetic. I'm <laughs> I'm in my I'm a follower of Bacchus. I mean, uh, I'm a follower of Apollo and Bacchus. So it really. Um, this goes with me. I, I wonder if you could talk a little about the title, Yo Yo Boing or Yo Yo Boing or, or um, uh, yeah. So how and why did you come up with that title? I talk a little bit about the in the about that in the lecture that, that I wrote. Both a Yo Yo was obviously the the toy, which which is yes. constantly in movement, and then yes. the two Yo. You said it right. I heard you talking about it, and you had everything right. It's, it's also the, the toy. It's the toy, Jojo. You see the movement coming and going. And also the two jaws in clash, the two selves in clash, and also the two languages, the two languages in, in crash, clash. So all of these things are together there. Jojo Boing. Yeah, and then it's also the name of a Puerto Rican um, clown entertainer or actor. Yes, yeah, he, it's the name of him. That's where I got it. I mean, I I remember it from my childhood. 
I remember Jojo Boing. <laughs> and also, it's also the eternal dilemma of the Puerto Rican that they are a colony and they have these two personalities clashing and the dilemma has never been solved. I think it's going to be solved soon in one way or another, but the dilemma is there, the dilemma. I read somewhere that you said that your all your writing was about, I, I think, liberation. I, I wonder, it, it seems to me that that liberation doesn't quite come yet in your your boying. No, Maybe it's, it's, still, it's still waiting. I wonder if you could say a little bit about liberation in your... Waiting. It's waiting because it's waiting. And I get really angry in the United States of Banana where I do it. I do a spiritual liberation and a, and a physical liberation. And still the emotional liberation has not come. But I'm doing it now emotional liberation but yes Jojo jo jo Boyne is not a liberation yet no 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 it's, the, it's still subdued subdued to the English uh, I had not clear my mind in what I wanted for my country my my mind was not clear but now it's clear you know and also uh, because I have seen what has happened with Puerto Rican Puerto Rico and the Puerto Rican culture. So I want the, the liberty of expression. Um, so that's how I liberated myself in the United States of Banana. But definitely in Jojo Boyne is the status quo of uh, El Partido Popular. Is the Estado Libre Asociado. You see in working the Estado Libre Asociado. You see that there. You know, you see something that is struggling to to become different than that. I think that's that's true. It's not there yet. You you end the uh, the the book with uh, well, there's sort of two little epilogue. Well, there's an epilogue with, with Zarathustra and 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 Hamlet, and you're in dialogue. This is where Janina uh, appears. Uh, in, in the book, and, and you end with the exclamation in, that you put in your in your mouth, I suppose, and you're a character and an author, uh, Dios que está muerto, the, the death of God. I, I wonder what, why and how you finish the book in, in that particular way. Uh, because I took it from, I, 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 I took it from Nietzsche, it says, what, what does it say? Um, Dios está muerto. ¿Quién te dio vela en este tierro? Gracias a Dios. Thank God it is, it is dead. Uh, it's not Dios está muerto only. Thank God, which is an expression. Thank God it is dead. Um, and I wonder it, if that's part of the, this liberation as well. Right? The, it's yeah, it, it, it is like the ending of the 20th century, thank God it is dead. Uh, and the beginning of my next book, my next book, I have Hamlet and Zarathustra and Janina as characters and Segismundo, but I didn't know it was a miracle when the characters appeared in the, sec in the second part, which is the beginning of United States of Banana. There, where the characters appear, it, it was like a miracle because I, how are they going to appear? I wanted them to appear, but I had to study a lot to, to understand Zarathustra, which I didn't understand him. And when I did this book, I had not read him well. So I, I had not understood what he was about, nor Hamlet. I had to enter Hamlet very deeply to really understand then these characters, but they appear like a miracle in the second part. So um, this is like this book. What is a book of struggle, of difficulty? It's the end of the 20th century, and the, we don't know where we're going. And then after this, the towers fell. You right. know, after this, the towers fell, and another reality came, and. That's what I, I think. This was a book of optimism, too, 
because we the United States was was you know everywhere in the world you know Clinton thought he could conquer the world and he conquered the world I mean in his own way I'm not saying it's good or bad nothing but there was a moment of optimism like a renaissance it was a moment of like a renaissance that era where we we wanted to expand ourselves and change and then all of a sudden, boom, the towers fall and another reality come, comes, like a medieval age. <laughs> a medieval age. And then more medieval. And 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 a different reality, you know. That that's a a a, a, a fantastic sort of re-description or, or account of, of the book. I think I think it's uh, very helpful. I've got one last question, which which comes from um, something you were just talking about, about difficulty and uh, understanding that you had to work to understand Nietzsche and, and so on. There's, there's a, a point in, I think it's somewhere in the middle of the book. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's, it's someone says, there's always an understanding in misunderstanding. Totally, and, yeah. and and I wonder, because I, I suspect my uh, students, that, that there's difficult things about this book uh, as well. It, it, it may strike students as difficult to understand in, in parts. I wonder what kind of understand if you could say a little bit more about that idea that even in misunderstanding there's a kind of understanding too. I have always believed that because uh, I misunderstand everything, and that's that's the origin of my creativity. The misunderstanding of the understanding. That's where creativity happens, mm -hmm. and originality happens there too because something new can come out of misunderstanding. It's like, like Echo, for example, Echo, the character. You think she's not or original because she's repeating what the other, the other speaker speaks, but she's very original because she's changing the, the, she's changing the meaning of the understanding. She's misunderstanding. She's bringing another meaning with a repetition that brings another meaning. So I think there's a lot of understanding and misunderstanding. A lot of misunderstanding, yes. And that's what, what we should uh, focus on, on understanding the misunderstandings. If we did that in the world, we would have better, better ambassadors and, and we would not have wars. We would try to understand the other, which it has always been been my my priority to understand the other, because since I have been a colony since I was a child, I had to understand the other, and also I have an empathy in myself. Uh, I was born with this empathy that I I really love the other. I have loved human beings all my life, and I will continue cherishing them very, very highly. And I never put myself on top of anybody. I am at the level of the people, at the level of the waves of the sea, at the level of my understanding, which might be a misunderstanding. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, I, we've, we're out of time. I, I think that that's... Um... That was a beautiful way uh, to end. The... I like you. I like you. Well, uh, I like you as well, and 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 I, I like this, the 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 writing that you've given us, and this notion of a creative misunderstanding, and um and a sort of democratic sense of collectivity. I, I think is is very. And strange. another thing about this writing is that it's not a diachronic; it's synchronic. You read it like you, you read a painting. You look everywhere around. You don't read it diachronically. You look everywhere around. You can read it diachronically, but you have to really look everywhere around and go back to what you saw before and then move. And you move in all the ways. You don't just move forward. It's not storytelling. I, I'm destroying storytelling. Not that I don't like storytelling, I like it, but there are other levels of getting to to art or to beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, 
again, we, we could carry on talking about this, uh, I'm sure, for, for a lot longer, but we um, I, I promised uh, to not to be imposed too much on your time. But thank you so much uh, for your generosity. Thank you so much um, uh, for this conversation. And, and it was really a great pleasure and a, and a privilege. The same with me. When you come to New York, come and visit me. <laughs> we'll that would be fantastic. More. Yes, thank we'll you. talk more. <laughs> thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>